I am currently surrounded by millions of avocado flowers and every single one of them is trying to reproduce right now. Even if you got a D in biology, just about everyone knows the single most important thing to ensuring survival of a species is genetic diversity. And the reason why avocados have been able to survive and thrive and evolve to this day is because they display a flowering behavior called synchronous dichogamy. Synchronous dichogamy decreases the odds of self-pollination. Synchronous dichogamy decreases the odds of inbreeding. Synchronous dichogamy makes it so that this tree will not pollinate itself. It is much more likely to be pollinated by that tree or that tree or that tree or that tree. Let me explain how that works. Avocado flowers are both male and female, but they only open as one sex at a time. And all of the flowers on any particular tree will all be open as the same sex at the same time. Now, I'm pretty sure this is a choquette behind me, which, and it's morning right now, which means these guys should be open as female. And yes, the open flowers behind me are open as female. That means every single open flower on this entire tree is female right now. And females cannot pollinate other females. Female flowers do not have pollen. On the other hand, this tree is a Monroe, which is a type B. And it has flowers open as male. Let me just verify that. Yes, they're male right now. And every single open flower on this tree is open as male. They are giving off pollen. There are no flowers on this tree open with female reproductive organs present and receptive to pollen. So this tree cannot pollinate itself either. This tree, this male, will pollinate that tree down there, that female that I just showed you. But then later today, something incredible happens. These little guys that are open as male within the next hour or two will close up. And then later this afternoon, they will reopen as female. Likewise, the flowers that are open right here in front of you are open as female on this type A choquette tree. Within the next hour, they'll close up. In fact, I could see some of them are already starting to close up. They will close up. And then when I come back out here this afternoon, they will be reopened as male. I'm gonna mark them here with this little orange ribbon. I'm gonna come back out in a few hours and show you that these female flowers have reopened as male. Let's get a close up of the female flower so you know what it looks like. I am so happy that we came upon this cluster of flowers right now because you're looking at a few female flowers. This one right here, this one right here, and they are starting to curl closed. At the same time, you have this flower right here that shows the male organs. See those three little fingers protruding out from the petals there? As these petals widen and open up going into the afternoon, this group of flowers will open as male. The female flowers will all be closed, and this guy will open as male. I'm literally watching this open wider and wider as I'm sitting here talking to you guys. Now we're back at the bee variety tree that's open as male. And as you could see, the, the flowers look a lot more fuzzy, right? Because where the, the female uh, stage, it's just that one organ sticking out the middle, the, the stigma. The male have multiple stamens that come out like little hairs. Now I'm gonna tie this ribbon right here around this branch so that we can come out later. And we'll take a look and see if these male flowers have closed up and this bunch contains female flowers later. Synchronous dichogamy is an awesome strategy for survival of the species when you are surrounded by other avocado trees. But what if you're a tree that finds itself all alone? If you're a tree all by yourself, if that giant land sloth that propagated avocado trees 20, 30, 40,000 years ago, 100,000 years ago, whatever, if that giant land sloth ate an avocado and walked 100 miles and pooped out that seed, and that was on the side of a hill and then it rained and that seed rolled all the way down the hill and took root and grew an avocado tree that's all by itself. What's it gonna do if all of its flowers are all open as female at the same time and then later in the day they're all open as male? That tree is not going to be able 
to send its genes down the line. Well, avocados are also capable of self-pollination. I'm back at this little cluster of flowers to talk about self-pollination. We see here, we still have some flowers that are open with female organs present and receptive to pollen. But at the same time, some of these little flowers are getting a head start. They're opening up as male already. I've been watching these open big, bigger and wider just as I'm sitting here talking. And so there will be some little time of overlap here where we have a few flowers open as male and we'll have a few that are still open and receptive as female. And then if the wind kind of shakes the flower a little bit, it's possible for some of the pollen from this flower to fall and make contact with that flower and pollinate it. And in that case, you'll wind up with a tree that pollinates itself. One flower pollinates another one on a tree. But flowers are even capable of self-pollination within flower. And I don't think I'll be lucky enough to find one now. But let's say this little guy right here, when he started to open, you see he's already displaying his male organs, so is this one. There might also, due to a flaw, due to damage, due to whatever reason, there might also still be some female organs present in this flower as it opens into its male stage. And again, when the wind blows and the, the trees shake a little bit, the pollen will drop off the male organs onto the female organ and the flower itself will self-pollinate. But, but, but Tom, didn't you just tell us that genetic diversity is important to ensure survival of the species? How did the Persia americana, that's the species name of the avocado, how did the Persia americana ensure genetic diversity in cases where it's self-pollinated. Well, guess what? Avocado DNA is a lot like human DNA. It's heterozygous. Each baby, in this case, each seed, contains the DNA of both of its parents. But this seed that was self-pollinated only has one parent. It only has one DNA. It only has one set of traits, correct? False. Because the tree itself has the DNA of its two parents, who had the DNA of its two parents, who had the DNA of its two parents. So just like people, several generations down the line, a trait could pop up that wasn't present in both parents. And I ain't gonna get into genetics and all that stuff because I don't know squat about it. All I know is that avocados are heterozygous. Heterozygous means that it's got variations of traits in the DNA from multiple generations. So that even a self-pollinated seed that came from the same exact flower, even if the pollen from this flower pollinates the female organs of this flower, the seed will still be different than the tree it came from. Before we summarize and wrap up, let's wind the clock ahead about four hours into later this afternoon. Let's take a look at the tree that was covered in female flowers, and I'll show you they're, co they're now covered in male. And let's take a look at the tree that was covered in male flowers, and you will see that they are now female. This is the cluster of flowers that earlier this morning were all open as female. This is a flowering type A, a choquette variety avocado, and in the morning its flowers were female. Now it's three or four hours later in the afternoon. The females have closed up and it's reopened as male. Look, at you can see the male organs, these little furry kind of fuzzy finger-like protrusions. And you could also see the glistening pollen, the, the yellow pollen in there. Let me see if I can make a shot here where we can kind of compare what this cluster looks like now to what it looked like earlier this morning. And finally, enough time has elapsed that our bunch of flowers here that this morning were open as male are now open as female. Look at those beautiful female flowers. You can see the difference. Remember, in the other picture this morning, they were very bushy and had the little stringy fingers sticking out. And now you see before you beautiful, beautiful female flowers that are receptive and ready to take pollen. Today we learned that avocados are survivors in the deadly game of evolution. And we learned the reason they are survivors is because they employ a flowering technique called synchronous dichogamy that ensures genetic diversity. The way it does that is it prevents flowers on any one given tree from breeding with other flowers on that same tree. It ensures that all the flowers on one tree are of one sex, while the flowers on another are a different. So that when that tree is male and this tree is female, that tree fertilizes this tree, then later in the day, this one swaps to male, that one swaps to female, and this tree fertilizes that tree. 
And that's how they share and mix their DNA. But we also talked about an exception, didn't we? I also showed you that sometimes under certain circumstances, not only will flowers from the same tree pollinate other flowers on the same tree, but sometimes a flower itself will self-pollinate. But due to the heterozygous nature of avocado DNAs, even then we minimize inbreeding. So if you are someone who loves to eat avocados, you owe it to synchronous dichogamy. And if you are someone who loves to eat avocados and you'd like to try some of mine, go to guacfarm.com, G-U-A-C-F-A-R-M. That's where we sell our Sleepy Lizard avocados. We also sell these awesome Sleepy Lizard t-shirts there. And depending on the time of year and season, we have other types of tropical fruit as well. As I'm out here walking around, I notice there's a lot of weeds and a lot of growth out here in the grove. So I'm gonna go jump on my mower and mow all this stuff down to the ground. While I do that, you go to guacfarm.com and I will see you on the next video.